Eric Filipina Vicky and for today's video I'm going to give you a tour in one of the most important historical place here in Cebu City which is the Sport San Pedro. Vistador or Vest is a Hippolyte of Hippolyto Labra a Catiponero during the anti-Spanish revolution in Cebu. He was the longest serving Cavisa de Barangay of Sabang Daco, Guadalupe from 1913 to 1967, 54 years old during the anti-Spanish revolution in Cebu. The Catiponeros lead by Leon Quilat believed that wearing the Vistador would make them invisible. So this is a vest with all the writings in it. Authentic Spanish sword.
this is the Ferdinand Bunchel line. This is Antonio P. Pigafetta, a chronicler of the voyage of Magellan and eyewitness to the discovery of Subu or Cebu. This is the Blood Compact. This is Enrique de, Val de Malaca, Magellan's interpreter, the first to circumnavigate the world. This is the Bastion Ignacio de Loyola. Bastion San Ignacio is the Saint Ignacio of Loyola, was a Spanish soldier who became a first and theologian. Before his conversion, he fought in the wars and was known to be brave and noble soldier. He founded the religious order Society of Jesus, popularly, popularly known as Jesuits, who came to the Philippines as missionaries of the Roman Catholic faith in 1581. San Ignacio was 
canonized in 1622 and declared as the patron of shoulders. He is also the patron saint of the military ordinate of the Philippines until today. The bastion which became the reclamation of the age at the land and the sea was dedicated to him so he could be the patron and protector of the Spanish military personnel living inside the fort. So this one is the bastion Ignacio del Loyola past bastion char. Cannons everywhere.
in this picture guys is a building built in 1910 under the ages of the American colonial government to replace the Spanish era aduana. The customs house oversaw the import and export of commercial goods to and from the port of Cebu. It now houses the Malacanang of Subo. Various sizes of earthenware are displayed in open area in San Nicolas. Since pre-colonial times, pottery has been an important export product for the trade-oriented islands of the Philippines, including Cebu, an important trading center in the Visayas. <laughs> Here is the fisher folks and their bankas on a rocky shore. Foreground bankas is a Filipino small boats, and it's not motorboat. Ship docks at the waterfront, the high and the low. This picture taken during the early American period shows a fleet of fisher folk and their bankas on a rocky shore in the foreground, while warehouses and dock ships can be seen in the background. It provides a contrast between the large scale international trade which brought wealth to Cebu, particularly the apple echelons of its society and the small scale local fishing industry which feed its people across its social strata. Here in this picture is the abaca hemp waiting to be transported along Cebu's waterfront. Abaca is one of the major major export product which is prim primarily used as raw material in the making of rope an important item in is in an increasingly globalizing world connected by large ocean going ships which relied heavily in this type of cordage yes Cebu Chinese cemetery showing model houses as part of tomb paraphernalia a practice common along among Chinese who bury their loved ones accompanied with finely crafted models of the materials, trappings of their earthly life photo could have been taken at 1910 and 1924. All right, guys, there's just some of these other photos here. And here, guys, are more, more, more other photograph photographs that was captured a long time ago for us to be able to see the historical places here in Cebu. They are being reserved for us to see how that looks like before and now. And this one here is the Triangular Park of Plaza Parian. This section of old Cebu used to be the residence of the Chinese. Not shown in the photo was the Parian Church, which had in its facade two bell towers. So this is the place of the Parian in Cebu. Yeah. Here, guys, is the Kali Juan Luna, as in this early 20th century photograph. Stretch its way from the old Spanish district to Puente Osmina and the new capital building. On the left side of the picture is the Matilda Brantford Church, which can easily be identified through its staple. And just beyond is the sneak dormitory for boys, which was destroyed during the Second World War. The street was later renamed Jones Avenue and is presently called Osmina Boulevard. Wow, it's very interesting. Here is one of the treasures during the Spanish colonial period or the pipe organs. Three are found in Cebu. One is in the Church of San Miguel in Argao, the Patrocino de Maria Church in Bolhoon, both from the 18th century. The third one used is found in Cebu Cathedral. It was supposedly brought by the Father Balcoa and was solely used for Archbishop 
masses. Only a stiff knob remains when it was dismantled for cleaning in 1992. The latest and the biggest pipe organ was installed. It was made of 1,200 thin alloy and wind pipes encased in Nara, Calente, and Tangili wood. It also boasts of the use of Alma Siga wood from Brazil. It has two manual cables with 56 keys, each two stiff knob, and a lower. This picture here is the Diocese of Cebu was established in 1591 as the first suffragan of the Archdiocese of Manila. A building which would somehow be worthy of the name Cathedral was deemed a necessity of for Cebu. Many attempts to build the cathedral were affected from lack of funds to the death of the supervising bishop. A, 15, a 1915 photo of the interior shows a pyramidal elevated roof over the crossing to accommodate a dome, a class and quote noting Cebuana Study Center of Assessors. The main nave was barrel vaulted. This present interior, which was a result of the remodeling after the war, it is not improving over one in 1915. Nice. So we have here the Holy Child of Santo Niño de Cebu. This child is the religious image given by the Ferdinand Magellan to the wife of Cebu chieftain Raha Humabun, who would be Christ Christian as Juana, Christ Christ in 1521 has become synonymous with Cebu and is one of the most well-known religious icons in the country of the Philippines. And, you know, we have Santo Nino de Cebu and people believe that um, he is the um, baby Jesus. This picture is the, the St. John's Day, San Juan Bautista Revealers. The first day of St. John the Baptist on June 24 is traditionally observed by taking a deep at sea. This could explain the wet clothing of the people and the photograph. Oh. Here is the simpler times the U.S. transport Warren ducks at the port of Cebu at a time when drone horse sardinellias were the main transport of people and the carbon drone air cart carried cargoes to and from the port. Alright guys, here in this area is the, is the peace time. Peace time. So peace time is a collection of vintage Cebu City photos that will provide us deeper insights into nature of American colonialism and representation of Cebu through the medium of photography. So in 1899, the American painter, sculptor, and writer Frank D. Mellet who actually died because of the sinking of the Titanic thought that the glamour of Spanish ancient power still lingered in the archipelago and there still remained a preacher's key life in the, of the East. So he believed that the Philippines existed for the American readers merely on the periphery of experienced reality. He said that bringing the Philippines into the Kudak zone would extract it from the fog it wasn't making it real to real readers. So unfortunately, Kodak was filed for bankruptcy, but thanks to our partners for bringing these photos into the public zone. 
and making this exhibit real to our viewers. So in this area, guys, it's being retained the most of the original captions of the photos to show the possibilities of distortion and manipulation of the photos meaning. Just like selection of the subject, posing, and even cropping, captions are photographic tools that reinforce contest and colonization because they contextualize and decontextualize the message. In a way, these photos were already constructed through the previous imaginings with the desired view and desired effect. We'll look back today with the same desire for Cebu. As we are here checking these photos of our beloved Cebu city. So there are quite a lot of different paintings here. This painting is the last supper painting in the selling of Cathedral. This is one of many selling paintings, cathedral, car, paintings characteristics of old Cebu church, churches. These paintings also serve to teach the parishioners pictorial catechism. Sure, this is the photography of Oiteng Shua photo collection created to you. This picture is the Diocese of Cebu that was that 